afternoon to you. Let's move on to what we're talking about in the first hour. Now, we're 10 years on from the moment the biggest financial crisis in living memory really started to accelerate. Now, the US investment bank, Lehman Brothers, remember them, went bust a decade ago this weekend, and the consequences are still being felt. In fact, we're still trying to work out what exactly the consequences are. Now, exclusive figures for the BBC suggest that people in their 30s have been hit the hardest. So if you are in your 30s, listen to Five Live right now, I'm giving you a virtual radio hug. The Institute for F Fiscal Studies, which I can say if I say it again, the Institute for Fiscal Studies found that millennials are now earning over £2,000 less than those of the same age group 10 years ago. So for those people who claim millennials have never had it better, there you go. £2,000 worse off. And workers in general are £800 less well off a year as a direct result of the financial crash. Well, we're joined by Jolion Rubenstein, who is a filmmaker, BAFTA winner and host of We Need to Talk About podcast. Jolion, good to speak to you again. As always, good to have you on the show. Thanks, man. As, as you said, you know, the financial crash. I mean, you know, are we still paying the price for bailing out the bankers? It's an absolute mad thing. It's a mad thing. It is a mad thing, <laughs> it and is it is very thing. long if you're my age and in your 30s. It yeah. is basically, you know, been, uh, oh. you know, something that... A problem that um, has landed, you know, flatly on our generation with us having absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, you mean, know, we're living at a time where, you know, the government has slashed almost £50 billion a year from public services, you know, from schools and hospitals. And over the same period of time, you know, the big four banks have paid themselves £50 billion in bonuses. You know, there's something got, really wrong with that equation. I mean, the government, of course, argue that they're putting more money into schools than ever before. They're also arguing that they're putting more money into the NHS than ever before. It is very difficult, of course, for them to argue they're certainly putting more money into policing. They are not. Uh, doing that, as the National Audit Office uh, explained uh, yesterday when they even said that government ministers uh, weren't even too sure what was going on with the financing of, of the police. But, you know, the government would argue that they are putting more money in, in those two sectors that you mentioned. Yeah, I, I love the way the government are making very cogent arguments that make so much sense to so many people at the moment. I mean, Jacob Rees-Mogg, just earlier today, making an argument that, you know, 10 years ago would have seemed laughable against the sitting prime minister. Again, a mad ting, I'm sure you would agree. Uh, but no, I mean, we, we, we're, li we're, we're living in a time where in some parts of the country, you know, one in five police officers have been let go. Firefighters, one in six. You know, I mean, schools across England are struggling with you know, 500 million less to spend, uh, sorry, 500 pounds, sorry, less to spend, you know, it, it, on each pupil a year, which adds up to billions missing from budgets for teachers, you know, and, and books. It's, it's a terrifying reality that we've walked into. And the, the other thing that's interesting to know, I'm, I'm um, you know, really proud to be part of the 10-year-on the, the campaign, and they uh, commissioned some research. And Although, um, you know, the IFS uh, have, have sort of published these figures, you know, the 10-year-on campaign think that just scratches the surface because they just look at wages. And when you look at the total amount of disposable income, you know, we're down at least 10K each. And, and the, the, the absolute sort of madness with this is why I wanted to kind of get involved. So tomorrow we're, we're, we're releasing a video and there's going to be a calculator so everyone uh, can actually go on, put in, because obviously it depends, you know, what, what, what you know, wages you usually get paid, and put in, you know, the amount of money, um, you know, that, that they make and see how much they've lost. But, you know, one in three children in the UK now lives in poverty, you know? That's half a million more than in 2010, you know, rough sleeping in the UK has more than doubled following cuts to the homelessness services. You know, one in ten hospital beds in England have closed. This is all... Yes, you can say that, you know, the Conservatives ideologically always felt that they wanted to, you know, rid us of our public services and chop them up into little pits and sell them on to all their friends. You can argue that. But really, was this precipitated by the financial crash? You know, and these guys did very well for themselves. Neha, have you have you seen the the email that Lehman Brothers have sent to their their colleagues? Have you seen this? No. It's it's amazing. I mean, I should say I'm a satirist. I didn't write this, and this was reported in the Guardian, and the FT, the Metro. And I'll just read you something from the email because it's just brilliant. This was, Lehman this was... Brothers and Sisters. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the last of our Lehman days. 
One of the best things about Lehman's was the people. What better way to celebrate the 10th anniversary than getting everyone, including former NDs and former Alanis, back together again? Now, they would say this is just a get-together, but, you know, the clink of champagne glasses on the 10-year anniversary of the financial crash might look if you're sort of going to get some food from a food bank or if your wages have flatlined and been frozen like a bit of a party. And again, what Stormzy might call an absolute mad thing. Do you think, though, Jolyn, that ultimately the reason the financial crash happened was because of our own greed? Uh, the bankers, of course, allowed that, but we <laughs> took out loans that we could not afford. Yeah. We took out mortgages that we could not uh, pay back uh, on houses we could not afford. Um, yes, of course, they facilitated that uh, by not being perhaps, or government certainly not regulating enough, but ultimately it's easy to blame the bankers. Who were they lending Do you know money what? It's, to? It's so lovely to be back on the BBC with its wonderful sense of balance, mate. It's it's a, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. I mean, I mean, if 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 you can tell me a bank where you can just walk in and go, "Hello, mate, I, I'd like an unsecured personal loan for this much," and they go, "Oh, absolutely no problem. We'll just give you that with no checks at all because it's not our regulatory issue to 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 look at how we're giving out money." Then that'd be great. The truth is, mate, that, the, that's the exactly problem, what happened in America. But that the is real, exactly well, you know, what the, happened the in sub, America. The subprime mortgage thing, you know, if I go to someone and I ask them for money, then they should work out whether I am in a position, you know, to pay that money. But the truth is, and we should come on to the facts about personal debt and how much more there is now, but the legal separation of the casino arms and the retail arms of the banks would have made a massive difference. Not this, you know, so-called ring fencing where we must make sure, you know, you know, bankers, you know, are, are allowed to kind of take the risk because they're addicted to... To this type of gambling you know essentially the rest of us bailed them out we bailed them out and we got sold out and i don't think that that is the problem of desperate people looking for loans that is the problem of the banks who shouldn't have been giving out those loans in the first place hmm. um let's speak to adam twos who's an economic historian at